but there's no evidence against me. How could they prosecute me? How could they arrest me? Have you ever wondered that? Have you ever asked that question yourself? Well, if you have, stay tuned because this is the video for you. My name is Lance Freiber and I'm the Defender of Justice. Defender of Justice. Defender of Justice. Defender of Justice. And I don't normally look like this. I look like this. And that's because I'm a defense attorney. I have a law firm in Linwood, Washington. We've been defending people charged with crimes for more than 20 years. And let me tell you, if I had a dollar for every time I've got the question, how could they do this? That how could they prosecute me when there's no evidence against me? If I had a dollar for every time, I wouldn't be wearing this Defender of Justice jacket. I'd be retired, okay? Um, but let me explain it. Uh, let me explain what that means. But first, if you find this video useful, please like and please subscribe because more people will get the help that they need. So when you think about they don't have any evidence. Well, that might be true from your point of view. From your point of view, they don't have any evidence. Where's the proof that I hit them? Where's the proof that I stole something? Where's the proof, right? Um, it's their word versus my word. There is no evidence. Well, guess what? In almost every case, the evidence is someone's word versus your word, right? Think about it. If you're a police officer and you get a call, you get a call and you show up and you show up at the scene and somebody says, hey, uh, Mr. Smith hit me. You're the police officer. Well, you're going to ask the victim, um, where is Mr. Smith? What happened to Mr. Smith? Where were you hit? These type of things. And then you're, you're going to take a report. And if you believe the victim that Mr. Smith did wrong, what are you going to go do? you're gonna go arrest Mr. Smith. Where's the evidence? Is there a video? Is there another person saying it happened, right? There's not. So evidence includes the testimony of other people, right? Unlike CSI that we might see on TV or murder shows where they go uh, do forensic analysis and fingerprints later, um, those are trying to prove major, major felonies, things like that. In the everyday case, the evidence is almost always one person's word versus the other. So isn't that frustrating, right? So what I need you to do is realize that when the evidence is one person's word versus another, that means it's going to be a more defendable case because hopefully um, you haven't spoken to the police, hopefully you haven't pinned yourself into a corner or admitted to wrongdoing. And so hopefully uh, we can point out about what the flaws are in the supposed eyewitness testimony of the complaining person versus what actually happened from your point of view. And more importantly, if you've watched my channel, you realize that we care very little about the evidence in most criminal cases. The police report is their version of the truth and it's usually not true, right? Um, it's usually exaggerated. Sometimes it's made up. Sometimes it's just inaccurate. Um, and so if we care too much about what the evidence is, we get in a sort of a, a status in defending the case that makes the prosecutor dig his or heel, her heels in and really cling onto their version of the evidence. Well, you have your version of the evidence and the worst part is they've got a police officer who's supporting the opposite version. So we want to try to avoid being too wed to fighting the case on an evidence basis, because as you already know, if you're asking the question, they have no evidence and you're charged, you already know um, it's sort of a bunch of BS, okay? In most cases, um, that's a legal term. So um, what we'd rather do is uh, try to uh, use the problems with the case to get a result that makes sense after the defendant does a few things. We're gonna let things calm down. We might have the defendant do some affirmative action so the prosecutor can hear your side better. And then we try to get to a result, hopefully that doesn't involve the people who aren't smart enough to get out of jury trial deciding whether or not you go home as a free person, right? And there's a lot of really uh, great uh, smart juries out there. And there's a lot that really uh, you know, leave something to be desired. And right now during COVID, it's my opinion that juries really want to convict people. It's my opinion that everybody's mad and it's very easy to blame a defendant uh, in front of them, even if there's no evidence. 
So if you're in that situation and you're wondering how can they go after me with no evidence, just remember they have something that's being claimed and if it's believed, that's evidence. So uh, take a look at my video on radical acceptance of reality. Just accept that's how it is and then let's get you out of this mess, right? We didn't ask to be in this mess. We may not even be in our fault we're in this mess, but we want to try to get you out of this mess, get the government off your back, protect your job, protect your freedom, protect your reputation. So if you found this useful, it's one of my shorter videos, please like and please subscribe. And if you find yourself in a criminal type situation, criminal case from the defendant side or even from the victim side, feel free to give our office a call. They've been doing this for more than 20 years, helping people in the criminal system. And we can listen to what happened, we can identify a way forward, and we can be there for you. Thank you. Thank you.